everyone. Welcome to the Peel Good Podcast, a podcast bringing you all the juicy marketing of yesterday, today, and tomorrow, brought to you by skilled experts coming together to share our expert opinion and knowledge on the latest marketing trends. Returning as your host, I'm Emily Knowles, the account coordinator for Clementine Creative Agency, an agency based in Atlanta that provides our clients with a multitude of creative services to include web development, social media, print, and branding. For this episode, I'm joined with a new co-star, Clementine Creative Agency's graphic designer, Paula Buckner. Glad Hello. Hello. <laughs> Glad to be here. Socially distanced, of course. Yes, because I mean, for obvious reasons, we're still, you know, navigating this ongoing pandemic. So compared to our first two episodes where we're side by side in this room, and then compared to our last episode where we were filming from home, we're now back in this room, but with some distance between us. Because we still want to take on and be vigilant and take on those uh, precautions that have always been said to us throughout you know, media and the news, so we're still making sure to be vigilant in that. I'm Paula, and I am the graphic designer here. Um, my background is in industrial design and graphic design, so have a little bit of a 2D and 3D background that I get to apply to some of the projects that we do. That's right, and the, your kind of your job really is some of the core of Clementine because as a creative agency, we want to make sure that we're being creative in all strategies and tactics when it comes to internal projects as well as client projects. That's right. We understand the importance of you know cutting through the noise um, because in your daily life you go through you see up to six thousand ads in some form a day. Yeah, on average, the average person sits there and they don't even know, especially through this new digital era. And I say new, but new as in as late as the two thousands, coming in with the internet and computer and iPhones, mm -hmm. with that brings social media, and through all of that, you're kind of seeing ads that you don't even realize are ads. It's coming kind of under the radar. For example, movies, when they place products in movies, it's a product placement. And while it doesn't look like a traditional advertisement, you're still getting that ad. Yeah, definitely. And then people wearing uh, apparel with logos on it, they're like walking billboards. So. Absolutely. Because if you see the check mark, you know it's Nike. Right. And that's representing Nike in itself. Yes. And this is nothing new. This is something that's been going on since the 1800s, that this marketing to people, um, it's just grown from print to digital. Yeah, because, you know, advertising has kind of gone through these, like, dynamic and diversified eras back from, like, the 1860s, you know, you kind of have tr more traditional um, advertising, mass marketing, and then you kind of get into the 1920s through the 40s where you have more direct marketing. And then, of course, you get back into the 2000s, and now you're in this digital marketing, and you have to think that creative thinking execution has to cut through that noise of social media and all that comes with digital, including email marketing. In order to cut through the noise, you have to have a creative strategy. Yeah, there's a strategy that comes with it throughout all these creative errors that kind of you see four approaches over and over again when it comes to creative campaigns. And not just from external brands, but also our personal campaigns that we take on for clients and ourselves. We kind of see these four approaches being you know, dynamic, mm -hmm. relevant, personalized, and engaging. Absolutely. And you have to be flexible because with everything that's going on today, with the, with the multi-levels of uh, marketing that's coming at you and just the what's going on in the world, you have to be really flexible in your strategy. Yeah, I think, so when you move through these errors and you look at these strategies, you definitely need to make sure that you are, like you said, being flexible. And really, the chief product officer of Adobe he, he said something that I actually really liked, and it he kind of said creativity is the world's most human craft. Mm -hmm. And despite, you know, the countless new changes and devices and mediums that come throughout each of these eras, creativity is still at the core. Right. And you can't, you can't really take that back from the strategy if that's what you're doing is to elevate a brand and kind of going that extra step and thinking outside the box to make sure that creativity is brought to that campaign. So thinking back on this, this creative strategy in some recent campaigns, what are some that you think you have been successful? I think, you know, Coca-Cola um, really comes to top of mind and how they have used branding and storytelling to be more part of their brand than not, especially starting as of 2014. You know, Coca-Cola is a really ubiquitous product. You know, you think soda, you think drinks, and you do think Coke, but from a marketing standpoint, that's not really what the average consumer is thinking about. But they were able to engage a wider consumer base outside of just those who are fans of the products by taking on this approach of share a Coke. Mm -hmm. So in their share a Coke campaign, they 
printed on Coke cans and bottle labels people's names. Mm -hmm. And so when you're at the store and you see your name, you're like, oh, I want that. Or you see someone else's name and you're like, I want to share that Coke with someone because it has their name on it. It's personal to them. And it kind of, again, thinking back on those four approaches of engaging, it's definitely engaging because you help, you know, engage the consumer with that personal touch, personalized. Mm -hmm. um, And then they're able to engage with others on that product. Yeah, and I think that campaign was really successful because they started out with, what, a thousand names at first, right. and it was so popular that people were like, where's my name? And uh, and so then they actually had machines where you could, like, do your name if it was a very unique name, or even occupations or, or different trades that yeah. you could find. It grew to be more inclusive mm-hmm. outside yeah. of just that initial approach that they were doing. Right. And because of that, it allowed it to be bigger than they had initially thought and that it was more dynamic. Mm -hmm. It was more relevant to individuals if it's something that they, they, like an occupation, like you said, or it's their name. It's personalized and it helps others to engage with the product. Yeah, absolutely. And then you think, not only do you come from a brand and storytelling way, you kind of think of McDonald's and how they were able to approach a billboard. Right. They, they, um, actually took an approach that was kind of outside the box of your typical billboard. Uh, They even conferred with NASA on the sundial billboard that they did in 2016. And it just, you know, it was really neat that they had different um, food items on their menu on the time of day that you would have normally consumed it. So, you know, they had coffee and then they had an egg McMuffin. Gotta have that coffee first though. Oh, that has to come first. <laughs> yes. Um, and so the sun actually cast a shadow at the time of day. So that took a lot of planning and engineering and definitely, um, a lot of thought went into it what seemed like a simple design, you know, a lot of thought was actually put into it. It definitely took on, it was very innovative, you know, because to approach, you know, and ask scientists to work with them to create a billboard, a traditional type of advertising, and really take on this new dynamic approach, which we see again as like an approach that you see in creative strategies, Mm -hmm. is that it was engaging because it allowed others to like engage with the billboard to see what kind of food that it fell upon each time that the sundial moved, but then it also was relevant because it allowed the time that usually you would consume these items Mm -hmm. to be present on the billboard. And at noon, what was really neat about it, at noon, the perfect McDonald's Arches M was cast onto the billboard. So then you're getting that brand recognition and you're really reminding people, you know, who this billboard is for. You know, they're famous for those arches. Everyone knows that. So when it's presented on the billboard, you know immediately this is McDonald's. Right. And Spotify is very similar in that they were able to take the data that they gather from users, individual users of the Spotify Mm -hmm. streaming app to take that data and make personalized playlists of the top 100 songs of each person and be able to have that for them at the end of the year Mm -hmm. so that you can look back. And that's very personalized because it's it's personal to that individual. And then you're able to take that and share it on social media. Mm -hmm. And then others see that and engage with it. And they had like, of course, a hashtag like 2019 wrap up, Spotify 2019 wrap up, but you then share and it gains like over a million impressions mm-hmm. based off one year off of one campaign that's utilized, that has been utilized mm-hmm. since 2016. And so that's really a lot of earned and free advertising for Spotify just because they did take on this new dynamic approach that was both personalized and engaging to that person. But there is some creative strategies that maybe could be considered too far, um, like the IKEA ad that was. Um, that was really popular in 2018. Um, it was an ad that was placed in a women's magazine for a crib that IKEA sold. And the gimmick to that was that if you peed on a strip that had like a pregnancy test technology on it, um, it would reveal a code that you got a discount on this crib if you were pregnant. Yeah. So, I mean, that's it's kind of utilizing that same technology that you would use inside of an actual pregnancy test and applying it to mm-hmm. the ad itself. That's kind of the parallels you see there mm-hmm. and how dynamic of a print ad that can be. Like stepping outside of like a traditional print ad, you kind of add on that layer of that's pretty dynamic. It does beg the question, though, like you said, is how far is too far? And people, yes, are talking about it now, but it's almost like, is it just because any press is good press, regardless of if they're talking badly about it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's definitely not one of those strategies that you would want to use for you know everyday advertising. That's um, right. But it was very successful for them. I mean, they got 4.3 billion uh, global impressions, and then it earned 11 million in um, 
in earned media. So, you know, it, it was it was very successful, but not something you'd want to do for every day. Right. And then, like you said, the reach of it itself, it started in Sweden, but then you have American talk show hosts talking about mm-hmm. it. And, you know, that's pretty engaging in itself, talking, mm-hmm. speaking on those approaches. That helps with the engaging process of it. Right. And then, I mean, you can talk about being personalized because that's a very personal element <laughs> to marketing. Yeah. Because, <laughs> you know, did they take that into the cashier and share it? Oh, uh, hopefully, hopefully not, not, you know, right? <laughs> And honestly, like you can, right, like you said, Beg, the question is how far is too far, but mm-hmm. if it's successful and you use it for that one shock value moment mm-hmm. and make sure it's not applied every single time to where it comes exhaustive and simply gross, right. then it could be successful in its own right. Yes. Now, Clementine, we haven't gone as far as, you know, <laughs> no. as Ikea to sit there and create a campaign like that, but we do definitely take cre- a creative edge approach to a lot of our client work. Mm-hmm. And a lot of that starts off with social media, mm-hmm. you know, because we definitely had a, a social media promotion on Leap Year. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that one was a fun project to do because um, it was basically the idea of what would we do with our extra day if we had to pick anything. An extra 24 hours, yes. what would you do? <laughs> and so each of us, you know, of course, had our all different things that we would do, and we could have, you know, taken pictures of those things and just posted them or we could have dressed up like whatever it was simply had like a t-shirt yeah um but to make it more fun and more daydream and um more engaging um we actually did these little animations over everyone we did a photo shoot um we did dress up kind of in the theme um of what our extra day was but you know we added these little little doodle animations like we were dreaming of what we were doing and it turned out to be really fun it added that layer of Mm -hmm you know, creativity that you normally wouldn't see through a social media post. Mm -hmm. Well, on average, because like you said, it could have simply been just like a static image within Mm -hmm. a gallery post on Instagram. But adding that extra layer of animation around someone, for example, our project manager and co-founder, Clementine Jennifer, Mm -hmm. she wanted to well watch with her extra 24 hours. If she could do anything, it'd be well watching. And so for her, she had like a whale jumping in the background that was animated in. She had a captain's hat, binoculars looking at the whale, the waves around her on the boat. Like it very much added the storytelling element to it Mm -hmm. through animation because it's just that extra feature on it. Absolutely. Yeah, that was definitely a fun and taking those series and just stitching it together to mm-hmm. make it that dream animated look, it just brought that extra creative step into it. Right. And for us, like, yes, that's dynamic because we did go beyond to what you would normally post to social media. It mm-hmm. wasn't just a simple post. It was engaging for others because they were allowed to engage with the post and, like, see that extra element applied to it. Right. And then it was personalized for us. Right. So it's still taken in all those approaches into one thing. Yeah, absolutely. And staying on that theme of holidays... I know last year for Christmas, we always send out a client Christmas card, Mm -hmm. you know, to all of our clients, we always send a Christmas card and they, each of them have been creative in their own rights, but you know, it has been a typical folded card that you then put in an envelope and it's sent off, Mm -hmm. but not last year. Uh, Last year, um, I designed and engineered a pop-up card. Um, So this one was kind of fun because it was in a winter theme and, um, and it shipped flat to each of our clients and, um, it was kind of cool because you kind of incorporate them into the process right. of like the assembly because this took a lot of work to engineer it and to figure out the pop-up elements and then they're adding the last and final step where they squeeze the sides and push up the bottom and then you have this little snow globe type sculpture that sits on their desk you know you have a little house and tree and a snowflake on one side and then you have a little happy snowman and you know it's just a fun and it's not specifically any particular it's more winter themed so it's not you know christmas per se um, right so it's something that they could keep on their desk for months to come it's That's something right. that they would want to engage in and like be a part of and and then it's something that hopefully they would want to keep and like you said it invites them into that process that it took to actually put and assemble that piece mm-hmm. from all the way from like the individual snowman the picket fence the tree the snowflake each of that being hand cut and then assembled. Mm-hmm. And then for them, like you said, the, the last step, pushing it up to actually have the full 
a full picture of what the card is. Right. And then there was a limited number of these that we made as well. So there was like a number on the bottom. So um, just like an artist would number and sign their prints, we did the same thing just so they knew that we handmade this just for them. So that was very personalized to each other. Like artists. a special edition almost. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And building off of this type of project that we worked on, we also, just for our clients, ha take more than just a typical brochure that you would find in the mail that's mailed out to mm -hmm. you. It's probably a one-piece double-sided, like, laminated brochure, but this actually is a more foldable package, almost like a gift almost, that for one of our clients, in that this client builds luxury condos in mm -hmm. Midtown. And so when someone like that builds such a luxurious product, you want to make sure that even the smallest of details, like the brochure for that product, mm -hmm. is just as luxurious and has that attention to detail. Right. And, you know, just the textures of it and the magnetic closure that it's just a special portfolio, that this isn't just some, you know, regular brochure that's coming to you. It's something very special. And um, also included with this was a personal note from the home builder who... Yeah. That's right. He like this home builder is one of the top home builders in the southeast. So to actually get that personalized element, mm -hmm. again, those approaches we talked about, the handwritten note is definitely a part of that. Yeah. And then this was very reflective of the client that, you know, there's an attention to detail. There's a there's a higher end um aspect to this that you would expect to see that in the home that he builds for you that you know you know that you're getting top quality you're getting attention to detail right. and that this is going to be something that you're gonna you know be proud of that's right because it's something as small as the brochure for the place you're living looks as dynamic and engaging and personalized as this mm -hmm. imagine the actual home that you're going to live in built by this home builder right. and that's really like the special take it takes on mm -hmm. There's also, um, speaking on like the home builders and the attention to detail, we also had a project that was a multimedia project that it kind of encompasses all senses. It was a very much experiential design um, that it, it incorporated a little bit of everything just to really, you know, as a person, it was for a sales center uh, for Pratt Stacks. And so when the uh, potential buyer comes in, they're greeted with this mural that was created by a local artist. Yeah. And the colors were a specific color palette to the company and brand. And in this mural um, were television screens. And they had videos and still shots and sound that were all coordinated to work together at very specific times. And then the additional tier to that was the lettering on the mural. You know, it could have just been regular flat letters, but right. there was an actual texture, an actual, you know, lay another layer that was added to it with the string art letters. Yeah. And it was just, you could tell that a lot of attention went into this, a lot of detail went into this, and that's very much what you expect when you want to uh, purchase a home and on, like and building on that personal touch because those you know 3d letters the nail art that was hand done mm -hmm. so yeah you could have someone who mass produces nail art and you hang it up on the wall and you call it a day mm -hmm. but to take the time to actually put a personal touch into it as actually doing the nail art yourself mm -hmm. that just that inc that reflects the place that you're going to live in because typically you would walk into a sales office on average you see one desk the sales agent behind it maybe a couple of framed pictures mm -hmm. of the location or the the model home for this it was definitely like an orchestrated symphony of things that allowed you to have a different experience than, than normal and then talking about creative edge you know having a creative edge with your um, marketing strategies it doesn't have to be anything that's like really expensive or you know big and and a big giant thing it could be something as simple as our business cards. right like our business cards you know you hand a business card out and sometimes it definitely is just that rectangle shape, same type of laminate stock finish. With ours, we have a more soft, you know, almost velvet type of touch with the letters themselves kind of lifted, like almost embossed, that gives you that different texture touch when you grab it. When you hand it out to someone, they grab it, they instantly engage and we often hear like, oh, that's different. Yeah. That feels good. <laughs> I like that. And so seeing ours versus like, you know, traditional business cards would definitely make ours stand out. And like you said, it's not like that has to be super expensive. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to make the biggest splash. It doesn't have to be something that is going to make you like famous off right. of that creative approach. Mm -hmm. But something as small as this mm -hmm. definitely is where creative edge can come in as well. Yeah. And a business card can be your first impression with someone. So when Absolutely. they're like, woo, and they, they want to hold on to it and they want to look at it more and even just all the way to the rounded corners of the card. Yeah. You know, that, that when you have a stack of cards together, you're going to see a little gap that it's, you know, all regular business cards have with a square edge, you know, are all going to fit together. But we are kind of different. That's right. Yeah. 
And even with our own clients, we're able to look at someone who has a square logo. Mm -hmm. And then we take that logo idea and we create that as their business card. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely like half the size of a traditional uh, business card, but it's still that square, smaller size that mm -hmm. makes it stand out amongst other business cards. And then you're definitely identifying like that brand and it comes front of mind mm -hmm. over other ones. And looking into the future, where do you kind of see, because you know, we came through these eras, like we were talking about in the beginning, this mass marketing, direct marketing, this mm -hmm. digital marketing, looking into the future, where do you see kind of creativity? It's still being at the core, but where do you see it going in the future and what's to come in the future? Well, you definitely have to um, be flexible like we discussed, and um, you know there is the feature of using AI, but yeah. that becomes more invasive in people's life, and they're going to be, you know, they're going to tune out a lot of things because they just feel like everything's being thrown at them. So you definitely have to be flexible, but you also have to be, um, while you're trying to make a deeper connection with someone, you also need to be respectful and um, of their expectations of you know the current culture you know that's going on at this time um, so you, while you're paying attention to all of these details then you have to find a way to kind of cut through that and you can still be like those four approaches you can still be relevant and all of that you can still be engaging when you make that connection that's engaging with your consumer or whoever mm -hmm. the campaign's directed towards doesn't mean just because a new uh, technology was added to the equation mm -hmm. that those that those approaches within the strategy that you constantly see throughout being creative and adding that creative edge has to go away. Right, and the technology is there as a tool. It's not going to replace the creativity. Um, it's going to help you know compile data. It's going to gather and compile data. It's going to read that data, and then what you do with it is is where you find your creative edge. We do talk more of this on our website at clementinecreativeagency.com. We have a blog posted there that speaks on the theme of this episode and kind of our own predictions of where we're going in the future, like you spoke on the new technology that comes into play and how we see creative strategy still being at the core of that. And if you did enjoy this, please look at our first three episodes of the Feel Good Podcast. Our first episode takes on TikTok and how you can use it in your branding and how other brands have used TikTok through marketing. We take a look at web accessibility and how your website should be all-inclusive. And then we do take a look at how marketing has adapted to the ever-going pandemic that we're all facing right now. And so we definitely have those, and those are still available on the Spotify, Apple, and Google podcast apps, as well as on YouTube. Thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, it was great being here. Yeah. I'll see you next time. <laughs>